But isn't it interesting as well that those who were blaspheming Christ last night, that the transgender community, the LGBTQ community that talks about peace and love and tolerance demonstrated anything but that last night as they blasphemed our God. You see through Hello, welcome to my YouTube channel. Hope you are feeling good. Today we'll be checking out a video titled We Ask Parix Their Thoughts on the Olympic Mocking Jesus. Wow. This is going to be an interesting one. Let's check it out. Go. The Olympics is supposed to be a showcase of the world's best athletes. So why would France use this massive platform to mock the Last Supper? The Bible tells us that one of the signs of the last days will be that the world would give themselves to the sin of lust and mock the Christian faith. Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lusts. Whenever we hear the word blasphemy, the first thing that typically comes to mind is someone verbally desecrating God's name. And while, of course, that's a big part of blasphemy, it can happen in other forms as well. Last night was the opening ceremonies for the Olympics, and we saw a desecration, a blasphemy, if you would, of the Last Supper scene, where there were transgender people sitting up on a stage and blaspheming the name of Christ as they were trying to replicate the Last Supper. Friends, blasphemy is alive and well, but so is our Savior. You know, James in his epistle talked about how they blaspheme that noble name by which you are called. It is the day after the Olympic opening ceremony and we are here at the Louvre and we're about to ask people their opinions on what we saw last night. Let's go. Did you get a chance to see the opening ceremony last night here in France? Yeah, we did. It was amazing. Yeah, it was great, really artistic, very creative. Did you like it? Yes, I love it. What was your favorite part about the opening ceremony? I seen the United States of America boat. Bron James holding the flag? That's right. What is something that stood out to you? Well, for me, Celine Dion was amazing. Celine Dion? It was a spectacular event. Have you guys heard of any controversy? Anybody upset about anything? I mean, it's the internet. I'm sure somebody's going to be mad Someone's about something. Mad. No, it's okay. They reenacted the Last Supper using people from the LGBT community. You have any thoughts on that? No, although I wish I would have seen it. They did a great job trying to be as diverse and inclusive as they could. Very inclusive, yeah. They yeah. had lots of diversity in it. I thought it was fine. At one point during the opening ceremony, they reenacted the Last Supper of Jesus. Did you see that part? Uh, well, for me, it's uh, nice. I mean, LGBT, why not? Christians and other religious people are saying that that was offensive, that it was blasphemous to Jesus. Do, do you think they make a point? Uh, no, I don't think so. If we're going to respect each other, a Christian or a Catholic shouldn't mock or make fun of the LGBT community. But the LGBT community seems to be able to mock or make fun of Christianity. It seems like it's a double standard, don't you think? Oof, uh, I don't know really. Do you think they were being respectful of, of Christianity? I don't know, maybe. If like a church put on a display making fun of people in the LGBTQ community, or if that wasn't towards Christianity and it was towards Muhammad, like Islam, uh, don't you think people would have been like, hey, that's not kind, that's not tolerant? Oof, uh, it's, it's a interesting question really. For my side, the respect for me is, is the base. Yeah. Uh, you need to start from there and I after agree. continue. Yeah, I, I fully agree. I think one, God has created every single person equally, mm -hmm. right? And that all of us deserve dignity and respect. Right. And I think we have an opportunity and maybe even a responsibility as people, not only of one nation, if I'm in America or you're here in France, but of the world yes. to be able to live in a place that is respectful to everybody, even if they don't agree with you. Yeah. And I think one way of, of showing respect is to not dishonor, to not blaspheme what other people believe. That to me, what we saw last night was blasphemous. It was disrespectful. Notice Jesus is at the center of the painting, as he should be, because he is the central figure of the human race. There is no one like him. Buddha, Confucius, Muhammad, Bohula, they do not deserve to be in the same sentence with him, let alone as a contemporary of Jesus. I mean, can you imagine if last night at the opening ceremony for the Olympics here in Paris, they did some sort of reenactment in connection with blaspheming Muhammad? It's unthinkable, right? And yet, in a sense, we've grown desensitized to this. You would think the world would be in upheaval, like what in the world is going on, right? I mean, France supposedly has really deep Christian roots. 
What's going on here? Well, as we've talked about before, there is no question a demonic agenda that's taking place. But isn't it interesting as well that those who were blaspheming Christ last night, that the transgender community, the LGBTQ community that talks about peace and love and tolerance demonstrated anything but that last night as they blasphemed our God. You see, through the resurrection, Jesus proved to the world that he is unlike any other. The sovereign King of kings and Lord of lords, he's had no predecessor, you'll have no successor, you can't impeach him, and he will never resign. Jesus, the center figure of the human race, but is he the center of your heart and life? Don't ever forget that the Last Supper is really indicative of what Christ was about to do. It was there that he talked to his disciples about the fact that his blood was going to be shed as a sign of the new covenant, that his body was going to be given over, which is symbolized by the bread, out of love for us as a sacrifice for our sins. We have to remember that, that Satan is called in Ephesians 2, the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience. Always keep in mind that we as Christians can do nothing greater than to elevate the love of God that was demonstrated through the death and resurrection of Christ. That is the gospel. And it's no wonder that Satan, through the world, seeks to desecrate it. Now, we as Christians can tend to become a bit frustrated by this, agitated by this. But let's turn those emotions into action. Let's go out into this dark world and decide to be a light. While the world is denigrating the name of Christ, let's lift it up so that his name will be magnified more and more throughout this lost, dark, and dying world. I like to show that if you and I believe the same thing, great. But if we don't believe the same thing, we can learn from one another in a respectful way. What religious background did you grow up with? Christian. Christian. Oh, yeah. very cool. Yeah. What, what would you say is the gospel? I mean, to live in peace. Yeah. Peace with each other, but, but especially peace with God. What do you think happens to us when we die? Paradise. Uh -huh. Being a good person is how, how you get to heaven. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Do, you, do you think you're a good person? Try to, to do my best. God's Ten Commandments. He actually gives us these 10 laws, these rules of life to live by, uh, which is his standard, right? Yeah. And uh, and so I like to ask people sort of the good person test. How are we doing? Are we obeying the 10 commandments? Would you say that you're you're obeying the 10 commandments? I mean, I'm trying to like to, to follow. So like one of them as an example, to get angry with somebody else is like murder in our own hearts. Have you ever been angry with anybody before in your life? Um, honestly, yeah. You're not angry with me for yeah. asking that question, right? No, 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 <laughs> not at all. How many lies have you told in your life? More uh, than yeah. one? Yeah, more than one, that, <laughs> okay. that's true, that's true, yeah. Yeah, I've, same, I've, I've lied yeah, to yeah. in my life too. Have you ever stolen anything? Yeah, before, yeah. as a child, uh, yeah. And I appreciate your honesty by saying, I did before, I've yeah, done it yeah. before. But I think the point is, is what, what God shows us as Christians in the Ten Commandments, what he says is that if we've broken one, yeah. one time, it's like we've broken them all. We are guilty. And and then what he says is that he is the good judge. And when we die, it's like we stand before a judge and he will judge if we're innocent or guilty. And I think we just showed that both yeah. you and I are guilty. Yeah. So if you died today and you were before God and he shows you are guilty of sin, um, what would you say to him so that you can be in paradise? You have to, to say, I'm so sorry for sure. that. I like that. And I think that's the first part of it yeah. is, to, is to recognize, wow, yeah. yeah, God, I am wrong. I am a sinner, but that's not enough. Let's say you committed a crime and you went before a judge and the judge said, you're guilty. Do you have anything to say? And you said, I'm sorry. You would still, if he was a good judge, you would still go to jail. Uh, so saying sorry isn't enough, but it is a good start. What the gospel tells us, what the Bible tells us, and I love this, and thank you for letting me share this with you. What it tells us is that, is that there needs to be a payment for our penalty. And this is where Jesus comes into place because where you and I should be, should, should experience hell, that we should experience the fullness of the wrath of God, 
we don't deserve to be with him in paradise. At the last moment, Jesus steps in and he says, I'm going to pay the fine for you. And that's what it means when Jesus goes onto the cross. He experiences the fullness of the wrath of God. He even says, he did, he says, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? To be forsaken is, is to have God turn his face, which is an awful thing. And then he says to God, forgive them, they know not what they do. And what that is doing is that he's, he's drinking the cup of wrath and he's offering us a cup of grace. And then he says to us that all we have to do is repent and believe. Repent from our way of thinking, from our way of living, from trying to save ourselves by just doing more good than bad and believing and following him and trusting that what he did on the cross was enough to save us. You're going to experience what no Olympian has ever experienced because we do not fight against flesh and blood but against principalities and powers. Our battle is against a hellish group of demonic forces that are gonna come up against us. And just like there's anybody and everybody rooting for you to not finish well, well listen, the Lord is rooting for you to finish well. So you must finish well. You must do what you need to do today because today is the day to get right and to train our bodies as Olympians. What does the world say? Go hard or go home? No, I'm here to tell you, go hard because we are almost home. While we all want to fight for equality and justice, one of the beautiful promises that God makes to us in the Bible is that one day he's going to redeem the world and he's going to make it a place where there is no more racism, where there's no more injustice, where it's truly a world in which every single person is created equally, where there is no hatred towards one another. And I love that he invites us all to be a part of that world. He says, if we just repent and believe, that is repent of our way of doing life, of our way of thinking and believe in him, trust in his saving work, the work he did on the cross. Have you noticed that no medal has ever been given to an Olympian by those who start well? It's those who finish well. You must finish well. And even so, no medal will be given to you by simply starting well. We gotta finish well. And it's true, it's all about Jesus and it's not about you. But the truth of the matter is that you were created by God to do some extraordinary things to bring Him glory. Don't lose sight of that, don't give up. And the reason I know that God is not done with you is because you're still alive. And by virtue of the fact that you're still alive, get back up, get out of the bench. Get into the batter's box. Get ready to step out onto the crashing sea, ready to mock the tumultuous storm around you because you know the weatherman. Living Waters exists as a non-profit ministry to help you grow in your faith. Wow, what an interesting video, what an interesting compilation. Just by the title, we asked Parix their thoughts on the Olympic mockery, mockering Jesus. Wow. I think everyone has the right to express themselves. You have the freedom of speech. You have the freedom of expression. You have the freedom to, uh, you know, choose whatever religion you want to choose. You have the freedom to practice whatever you want to practice. But it becomes a problem when you start making mockery of other people's religion, which I believe is, 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 is something unacceptable. We all understand that the LGBT community, they always talk about love, they always talk about respecting each other, but how come they are not applying double standards to Christianity? Because what they just display, showing the Last Supper, I think that is more like a mockery. And I totally believe that is totally unacceptable. If they are talking about love, the, if the LGBTQ is talking about love, is talking about, you know, respecting one another, is talking about respecting each other in the society and accepting them how they have, how come they are applying a double standard to Christianity? Because what they just display in the opening of the Olympic is totally a double standard. Because if you are saying you don't want to be mocked, if you are saying we have to respect each other and here are you displaying disrespect toward a, a, another person's religion, 
which I believe is totally is totally unacceptable. We all know we Christians are very accommodating. We respect one another. We try as much as possible to respect other people's religion, to respect other people's view. But in a situation like this, whereby you are trying to uh, uh, display a sin that shows mockery of Jesus, I believe that is totally wrong. That is totally unacceptable. Just as we have seen in this video, we all understand that France uh, is a country that they, 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 is a country that is rooted in Christianity. So I'm very surprised as an African person. I'm very surprised seeing this type of display in France. I believe it's something I, I never, I never expected. Cause if we are all going to live in peace, I think there is a need for us to learn to respect one another, for us to learn to accept one another instead of trying to, uh, make mockery of one another instead of trying to show a double standard. If you are preaching about, you are talking about respecting each other's privacy, respecting each other's uh, need, accepting each other in the society. Because I know LGBTQ, they always fight to be accepted in the society. They always fight to be respected in the society. But how come they are displaying a mockery of uh, another person's religion, which I believe that is totally unacceptable if this was to be islam i believe this is not going to they are, they are not go, they, they are not going to accept it just like that so and i believe we christians should not also accept something like this because if it's okay for you to say you want to be respected but if you are saying you want to be respected and this and at the same time you are showing disrespect for another person's religion i feel that is totally unacceptable I've really learned a lot just by watching this video. I would like to appreciate uh, those that have, you know, take out their time to, you know, to be able to sh produce this nice video. I would like to appreciate them. And I would also like to invite you to subscribe to their channel. I think the, the name of their channel is uh, Living Waters. You can also show support by subscribing to my channel. Don't forget, click on the subscribe button, click on the like button. Do have a nice day. Yeah.